Hey Scotty, I just finished cooking some beans and I'm ready to rewatch the Cold Trinity. You wanna join me? Ooh, that's much better. I guess some spaghetti western could wait a little bit. Why not? Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews. This series where Scotty and I take the time to go through pre-con decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea of how strong they are and if they synergize with the given commander, the cuts of the deck, and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review. I'm your host Vlad, this is Scotty right here. Thank you very much Scotty for that wonderful introduction as usual. And today we are reviewing the last of the commander decks for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. This is Desert Bloom, Discard Lands, Grow Them Back. So this is going to be an interesting one. So far, the decks have been very, very nice. And I will say in the past few expansions, they've had quite a few twists to the decks. They aren't the usual type of thing. So I think they're trying their best. Also, I love the fact that he has a cactus little one over there. Anyway, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one. This is a Naya deck. It's going to have a sample collector booster pack. Also, a 100 card deck, which of which 10 are new cards. So two less than the Murder's Academy Manor Commander decks. A deck box, 10 double-sided tokens, a life wheel, a strategy insert, and a reference card. So without further ado, let's see what you, my proud protector, has to offer us and what the words are on the box. Stay sharp, little cowpoke. <laughs> that's cute. I really like that. Oh, that's so cute. Anyway, if you're new here, first off, welcome. Also, if you're interested in buying and selling cars like these ones, we have made our own UK exclusive car marketplace. So you'll be able to find that very friendly sharks that code UK. That's um, where you can find all of your favorite cards right there and then and you can sell them too. That's what's on the box. Nothing major and then get the deck box here as usual. You get the sample and you get the life wheel. So the deck box as the normal one that you won't be able to fit any of the sleeved or double sleeved cards inside but the normal cards it still holds and no more picture on the spinning life wheel and then yes we'll go into open straight up and jump into the collector boost and stuff because so far we have been very fortunate with them i will say that for sure i think we've <laughs> pulled the jackpot on them anyway in here you'll find three cards one is a token at card then two showcase slash variance cards one is going to be the uncommon foil and this is the fling and the next one is going to be our either rare or mythic of any kind oh another archmage's charm so that's the second one we got i see this is a win and then a token at card that we don't need so there you go let's have a look at the leaflet proper let's see what the contents entail and what the lore is of our little commander here and what yuma is about so there you go if you want to pause you should be able to see properly the story behind yuma and then the deck as a whole right here uh desert bloom this is a very interesting theme of a deck i will say that to be able to play around deserts which you know there aren't that many deserts in magic the gathering now there are with the new expansion but that is that so play around lands landfall and all that i will see how it plays and um yeah that's it let's dive into the deck as usual if you're new here first off welcome but also uh uh, we review these decks. Oh, come on, pull that. We review these decks as a whole with the given commander and how good they synergize or support the given commander. Therefore, that's how we score them. We don't really look only at the general or uh, the value of the cards inside, but how good of a synergy the deck is straight out of the box. As a lot of these decks, you'll find that are a jack of all trades can go none. So it's quite important to figure out which deck is a more synergistic straight out of the box and which one you have to least edit out of as we do tell you what cast we would make or keep or so on and so forth. So back here, double-sided tokens. They have plan zombies, elementals, plant warriors. Oh, dragon egg, that's cute. <laughs> that's cute. Okay, plan warriors. And then you have here some bounties for the wanted game that you could play at your LGS when their game released as usual. And here are the rest of the tokens. That's gonna be interesting. Sand warriors, there are some tokens I've never seen before here. Very nice. All right, and then let's dive right in. And for the first of the commander decks, this commander is always going to be borderless and foil so this is really really beautiful this is the first thing they're doing and i really love all the new commanders it has such beautiful art look at that gorgeous gorgeous art right there 
right there really really nice okay so our commander is yuma proud protector so yuma is a 6-6 human ranger that costs a whooping eight so he is not the easiest to cast but then again you know in naya you'll have these colors and it's supposed to be a, a land <laughs> fall kind of deck so you shouldn't struggle too much to get your commander into play and get lands into play anyway this spell costs one generic less to cast for each land card in your graveyard so that's one easy way to cast it and then whenever you map protector enters the battlefield or attacks you may sack a land if you do you draw a card and whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from anywhere you create a 4-2 green plan warrior creature token with the reach so that's interesting and then we have kiri talented sprout so i guess that's the companion of yuma that is so cute it's a zero three and it costs four and um other plants and tree folk you control get plus two plus zero so it's a supporter and at the beginning of your post combat main phase return target plant tree folk or land card from graveyard to your hand so it's a buffer for other plants and tree folk okay and then it allows you to well kind of crucible worlds um kind of because you can't really play it you just return it to your hand so I, I wonder if the crucible is actually gonna be in this deck as a whole so then's the commander and the general so what does the deck want us to do of course you want to put lands in graveyard okay so that's an interesting spin on it you want to sack those lands you want to veil i guess you want to just put as many lands in graveyard and then be able to replay them there's a, an interesting thing because you're not playing black you don't have a lot of reanimate so you got to be careful how you mill yourself so there has to be a way to just stack those cards that are land cards and then put into play there's going to be a ramp element to it for sure and this seems to be also a plant slash tree folk um element i don't know if that's going to be token wise or if it's just going to be a bit of both we'll see how it is and uh yeah so it's it's interesting uh, this definitely allows you to bring stuff back and this wants you to sack it and wants you to keep stuff into graveyard but do remember that you can only play one land per turn unless you have enchantments of creatures that state otherwise so i'm hoping that they do have those cards in this deck let's start off with a land <laughs> of course it's a desert scavenger ground so we will read the deserts here unless we've seen them plenty of times so it has the usual tap to add one generic and then for two tap sacrifice it you exile all graveyard so that's one way to get a desert into play and i think as a first i'll have to keep the lands um here <laughs> funny enough so we'll see how that goes and then we have sunfold titan so whenever it is battlefield or attacks you may return target permanent card for mana value three or less from greater to the battlefield usually i don't really like this this is fairly expensive but if you have a lot of ramp in the deck and this is one of the ways that you can bring stuff back from graveyard into the battlefield then maybe yes if they are better and you don't need this then yeah of course just swap it up for something else either way it is kind of synergistic with the commander kind of as in uh, you can return stuff back right so that's one thing then we have onath locus of rage of course landfall is a 5-5 elemental that costs a whooping seven and has landfall whenever land enters the battlefield in control you create a 5-5 red and green elemental creature token and whenever it or another elemental dies it deals three damage to um any target do keep in mind that it's not a plant tree fork or land um so him but the land itself it is so it's buffed by kiri as well so that's something to keep in mind and yeah it's sort of synergistic in the end because yep it wants to deal with lands as landfall and whenever it dies so lands that die go for yuma so in a way it is synergistic then we have descend upon the sinful exile all creatures for six and then for delirium you get to create a four four white angel creature token with flying if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard um yeah that's interesting you're definitely gonna be milling yourself then yeah that's one thing to keep um otherwise just play for well then we have chromantic lantern very very important for deserts if you're playing a lot of deserts and a lot of cards at least this one gives you the ability to play all lands. so um and still get the mana that you need so this is definitely something necessary marshall's anthem marshall's anthem is an enchantment that with multi kicker costs four multi kicker is two creatures you control get plus one plus one and then when it's just battlefield you return up to x target creature cards from graveyard to the battlefield where x is number of times it was kicked okay so 
Another way to return stuff from graveyard? Great. So how are we gonna get stuff from graveyard that is creature? Because lands, I'm seeing some way. And we have shelter thicket. This is cycling um, tap land. So, okay, it's a mountain forest. And then we have scute swarm. It's a one, one insect with landfall that costs three. Whenever a land enters the battlefield in control, you create a one, one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, you create a token and that's a copy of skew so that's really really good it's not something that's going to be buffed by carry but again more tokens more generation of um, insects and then the more lands you control the more uh, you can do so so far we're going tokens return stuff from graveyard where these things are all synergistic so we'll see how it goes okay our promise sorcery costs five is green social library for up to two land cards put them on the battlefield tap then shuffle then if you control three or more deserts create two 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 black zombie creature tokens so more of the same it's up to two land cards you definitely want to start having these um and it comes into battlefield tap so definitely something great um oracle of moldiah very good that's what i was hoping is a two two that costs four you may play additional land in each of your turns you will play with the top card of your library reveal that's a bit of a shame but at least it's pretty good the first part and you may play all lands from the top of your library so these are very very good and it's definitely synergistic and necessary then we have ramon up excavators a two three naga clear that costs three you may play lands from graveyard very very good it's like a crucible absolutely necessary got a gross that's interesting you can always cycle them so the reason why they're synergistic is that you can cycle them you draw a card you can go towards making yuma cost less and then you can just bring them back with some of these other cards if necessary world shaper merfolk shaman is a three three that costs four whenever it attacks you may mill three cards when it dies return all land cards from graveyard to the battlefield tapped okay so that's not bad uh it allows you to to do two of the things that you want to do and when it dies all the graveyard all the lands that's very 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 nice and it's interesting then we have nestling dragon the nesting dragon is a 5-4 dragon with flying cost 5 has landfall whenever land enters battlefield in control you get to create a 0-2 red dragon egg creature token with defender and when it dies you get to create a 2-2 red dragon creature token with flying and the shivan effect that's an interesting one again more landfall more synergy and uh yeah it's just it's just great <laughs> just more tokens so then we have turn timber soars a three three after it costs three whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere you get to create another plant token which this one will be buffed and then you can sack uh three creatures and um, pay one return take a land card from graveyard to your hand which if you necessarily need it, it's there. And with the fact that you can play more lands per turn, that's also nice. Savine's Reclamation Sorcery costs three return take a card with mana value three or less from graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from graveyard, you may copy this spell and you may choose new target for the copy and you can flashback it. Um, there is a thing to say, uh, lands have zero mana value. So if I'm not mistaken, the Reclamation, you can correct me in the comments down below, cards like Reclamation can allow you to get permanence uh, like lands back into play so that's something and you can flash back it as well um so yeah it's good because then you need to have this reanimate cost or ways to bring them back because you're going to be milling yourself as there is way to do that so that's interesting ancient green warden is a five seven elemental cost six and it has reach you may play lands from graveyard great and if a land enter battlefield causes a triggered ability or permanent in control to trigger an ability triggers an additional time very very good very very synergistic and don't mind the cost because well you're going to be ramping a lot i'm on uh, interested in how many lines you're gonna have in this deck titania protector of argoth is a 5-3 elemental that's a legendary creature it costs five and when it enters the battlefield you return a target land card from graveyard to the battlefield and whenever land you control is put into graveyard from the battlefield you get to create an elemental creature so that does not get buffed up but still you get to create more very synergistic then we have return of the wild speakers a five cost three instant draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until the end of turn um here's the thing there are better alpha strikes in green and more synergistic to the deck so i don't think this is something you necessarily need it is an instant speed so you can definitely do 
what shenanigans you need to do with this kind of deck but if you have better i would choose that one oh unearth that's another great way to bring stuff back perennial behemoth cost five generic is a two seven you may play lands from graveyard and you can unearth it for two so you can return it and then exile it with haste but it's not bad if you accidentally milled it for whatever reason with all the other cards then you can definitely um, just bring it back bring back an extra land on that turn and swing in more two seven <laughs> which is not too bad uh, otherwise yep another way to get more lands from graveyard into play and then we have avenger of zendikar i wonder if they actually put the nissa in here that would be insanely strong and also the the snake card that uh, interacts with landfall this is a five five elemental cost seven when avenger of zendikar enters the battlefield you create a oh, zero one green plan for each land you control okay so that's that's very strong and then or landfall whenever land is the battlefield and control you may put a plus one plus one counter on each plant so that's very strong in this kind of deck and yes it's expensive but again you're going to be ramping hopefully quite easily as isn't <laughs> shaper of sand is a three three human warrior and it costs naya and it has desert walk okay so um, so long as the player controls a desert i don't know how that how much that is going to be used unless you're playing a mirror match deserts are not very big in commander and you may play desert lands from graveyard that's great um we don't have a lot here so far but there might be more and you'll play desert lands from your graveyard and whenever a desert enters the battlefield in control you get to create two one one red green and white sand warrior creature token so again the token generation is quite strong i'm wondering let me see something um give me a sec okay so what i've done now is i've divided the cards in a little bit of a few piles because this deck i think despite the fact that it's doing a lot of things they're kind of synergistic in and of itself so on this pile you have cards there are returning cards from graveyard or allowing you to play lands from graveyard which is quite a bit here you have the tokens generation or the transformation of something um into a token or into a creature so like for example omnath and then here you'll have a play additional lands and this one just in between the two because it does tokens and also allows you to return land so this one creates tokens and we'll go here escape the wilds is back as all the top five cards or library you may play cards as all this way until the end of next turn and you may play an additional land this turn so this is a reason why you'd have it it's a shame that you don't have blue because then you could uh, do a lot more of this uh, but there are a lot of cards in green that allows you to play an additional land this turn um if you have them use them more than these kept the wilds because excelling top five cards it's always annoying if you can't play all of them but at the same time if you're playing towards the elite end game you might be able to play all of them because of the amount of lands you have so next up we have heaven and earth this is an instant on one side you deal x damage to each creature with flying on the other side you deal x damage to each creature without flying it's a decent wipe in general uh, you don't have any creatures with flying but hey oh, if you don't have any better wipes that's not bad sun scores divide which is not a desert then we have sand scout which is a, just a battlefield and then if an opponent controls more lands than you you search your library for desert card and put it onto the battlefield tap then shuffle and then you get to create some more tokens so that's quite interesting then we have decimate another good target removal spot removal it's always good to have at least one farewell or seer command but that's not bad we have embrace the unknown which excels the top two card of the library until the end of an next turn you may play those cards again same thing as uh, escape from the wilds but it ha does have re trace so at least this one allows you to play it again by discarding a land so it is a bit synergistic but i still am not a huge fan of these then we have cataclysmic prospecting which is a great great board wipe because it deals x damage to each creature for each mana from a desert spent to cast this spell you create to create a tap treasure token so that's really good for your deck and then we have the mending of dominaria i love this saga and on the first two chapter you mill two cards then you may return a card card a creature card from graveyard to hand and then you return all land cards from graveyard to the battlefield then shuffle graveyard into your library and if you have a lot of landfall effects this is going to be insanely strong then we have genesis hider which is not really synergistic with this deck you spend x you search the library uh, you reveal the top x cards of the library you may pull an all land permanent card with value x or less or among them onto the battlefield and then uh, um, you can just have the centers with x plus one plus one counters on it not really synergistic but the do enchanter is a huge synergistic card as a two three plant druid cause three has reach lands you control and lands 
cards you own that aren't on the battlefield are deserts in addition to their other type and then unless you control have a tap to have one man of any color and for two you mill two cards and gain one life for each one car mill this way that's super synergistic and with yuma the third ability that's gonna be really strong then we have vengeful regrowth and this is a sorcery cost six return up to three target land cards from graveyard to the battlefield tapped very good and then you create that many four two green plant warrior creature tokens with reach and you can flash back it very synergistic very very strong then we have angel of indemnity is a five five angel warrior that costs six it has flying and lifeling when it's battlefield you return target permanent card with mana value four or less from graveyard to the battlefield remember um the permanents with zero value are also if i'm not mistaken a lance i mean the comments down below anyway and you can encore it so this is another way to return stuff unfortunately it's necessary because you don't have black you don't have reanimate so it's kind of necessary to return stuff from the graveyard um to hand i'll put it here it's kind of synergistic if you have better effects use them but if not yeah this is a fine way and plus it's a fine life linker 5-5 five, five, so six is not that expensive in this kind of deck then we have cactus preserve it's a desert enters the battlefield tap and you tap it to have one mana of any type that a land you control could produce and then for three until the end of turn it becomes an xx green black creature with reach where x is the greatest mana value among your commanders and it's still a land so that's pretty pretty good it can buff itself up and it's a desert then we have rumbleweed instead of tumbleweed it's a plant element also that gets buffed by the general it's an 8 8 that costs a whooping 11 about five for 10 generic and one green and this spell costs one generic last for each land card in your graveyard so that can go down very very quickly and it has vigilance and reach and trample and when it enters the battlefield other creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample in the end of turn basically this is an alpha strike when it enters the battlefield and um otherwise it's just a huge creature that they have to deal with because yeah and it's not that hard to get it to um well cast because if you have five of these in the in the graveyard then it's an eight eight four six so not bad at all and it shouldn't be too hard to do synergy with and uh, yeah this is more of a buffer than a return i don't really know where to put I, it it does synergize with cards in engraver so i guess you could put it here then we have turn morphic expanse second search all over for a basic line card put it in battlefield tap then shuffle this is a lot of the effects that um get you to landfall so that's really nice same for evolving wilds so usually these cards are kind of meh in the deck but in this kind of deck it might be really good then we have the swift food boosts hexproof and haste that's very very nice that's very nice indeed then we get an explore that's great you may play additional land this turn draw card important in this kind of deck absolutely then we get a soul ring that's really good for ramping uh, even in this kind of deck even if you don't uh i i would say that though you know the mana rocks if you have more of the effects where you can put more than one lamp per turn those are much more efficient than uh the the rocks themselves but you got to be careful because those are creatures then any wipe will destroy them so you gotta balance it out then we have satyr wayfinder it's a one one satyr that costs two enters the battlefield reveal the top four cards of your library you may pull a land card from on them into your hand put the rest in your graveyard which synergizes with the graveyard part so that's great then we have perpetual timepiece it's an artifact for two generic you tap mill two cards and then for two generic ex salad shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library allowing you to shuffle back those lands when you don't need it and or if you specifically need some cards that you really didn't want in the graveyard that is a good one to keep because you're milling yourself you're discarding so much so that's a good idea crawling cessation is an enchantment <laughs> that is really creepy i think that's a nightmare for a lot of people and it costs three is green at the beginning of your upkeep you may mill two cards so that's good and whenever one land or more land cards are put into graveyard from anywhere you get to create each turn uh one one green and a creature token so again this is more of the uh, i mean it is synergy in the end with the putting uh, land cards into graveyard and it does create more tokens and we have painted bluffs another desert and that allows you to filter mana into a specific color then we have the command tower then we have magmatic insight sorcery as an initial cost to cast a spell discard a land card which is good in this deck then draw two cards so not bad okay so just like then we have the cross and verge uh, has a land that enters battlefield tapped and you add one generic or sack it search a library for more etb effects for landfall now we have this desert of the true which enters the battlefield tapped 
and cycles. I wonder if you're gonna see the, what was it, Sokazan as, as well as the desert. There are quite a few rare desert um, as well. So I wonder if you'll see those ones. Skullwinder, wow, this creepy card. It's a one three snake that costs three, has a death toucher and enters the battlefield. Return take a card from graveyard to your hand. Great. And then choose an opponent that player returns a card from graveyard to your hand. Uh, to their hand then the second part is annoying if you don't have any other effects of returning cards to graveyard then um yeah use that otherwise replace it desert of the indomitable another one that you can cycle and then the jungle shrine these are just kind of meh bitter reunion from brothers war send shaman that's this battlefield you may discard a card if you do draw two cards so you can rummage for two and then you can sack to create to give creatures you control haste until the end of turn this is more of a, uh, a, a rummage outlet and there are better rummage outlets for this in this color so i'd rather use better desert of the fervent another one of those virus stance is an instant cost two. choose one target creature gains indestructible until the end of turn and then you get to destroy target creature with toughness four or greater that's nice that's not bad at all it allows you to choose either one and it's a protection spell or um yeah or um destruction spell i would say that i'd rather get the boris charm that does this uh because it kind of does the same things myself but and of course protection wise there are better spells then we have dunes of the dead which uh well that's generic and then is whenever it's put in your grave from battlefield you get to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token and then shifted dunes there you go there they are and um, the shepherd dunes you get to create um well pay one life to add one white or you sack the uh, desert any desert and any creature you control get plus one plus one until the end of turn has oasis which is similar to the other one but this one you sack a desert and target creature gets plus three plus three until the end of turn elvish rejuvenator great one when answers battlefield you look at the top five cards of your library put a land card from on the motor battlefield tap and we put the rest of the bottom of the library in random order so more of um well just playing more lands per turn i guess um then we have the winding way a two sorcery chooses creature or land reveal all the top four cards of your library put all the cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand and then the rest into your graveyard so depending on where you are could either or and it could be really really good so not bad not bad at all and then we have spring bloom druid is an elf druid that is a one one that costs three and when it enters about few miss second land if you do you search your library for up to two basic land and put them onto the battlefield depth. so this is a very 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 good effect and um yeah it's second land and also allows you to, to get two more lands landfall is great arcane signet is decent unholy he deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker or if for delirium it deals six damage instead if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard so you're milling yourself it's quite in easy to use this as a six and yeah i would keep that it's a easy six thrilling discovery this is a sorcery it's boris you gain two life then you may discard two cards if you do draw three cards okay so more of the same and this is really really nice electric revelation it is an instant cost three as an initial cost to cast a spell you discard a card then you draw two cards and you can flash back it so again more of the enabling of this card you know ramaging so we have have those now that's great um then i think so far the main thing that's lacking is very very nice strong creatures to deal stuff with um board buffing your tokens because you have quite a lot and overall land followers i think land followers are just very very short and few here and i think that's the way they should have gone a bit more here anyway eccentric farmers the two three human peasant it costs three when it's this battlefield you mail three cards then you may return a land card from graver to your hand very good very synergistic and then uh well to be fair that's land graver to your hand so we put it here and then we have harrow as an initial cost to cast the spell sack a land search a library up to two basic lands again very very good very synergistic and it's an instant then we have the ramen up ruins which deals two damage to each opponent very nice it's another desert and you can bring them back path to exile very good removal absolutely keep it and then we have the requisition raid which is another interesting one i don't know why you would put it here necessarily um well no actually no i understand this is a one of ways because it's counters it's not plus one plus one yeah i forget so this one puts plus one plus one on all creatures so if you have a lot of tokens then yes you buff the board that's definitely something you want if you play more the token game then we have bovine intervention you destroy an artifact or creature 
It's there are better ways to do this, but it's a fun one to do it. Map the frontier sorcery cost four, search library up to two basic land cards and or deserts. So that second part is great. And put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Very, very, very important because of the deserts. And then we get the economy pylons, which enters the battlefield, and you surveil one, and then you tap to add one generic, and you can cycle through a uh, mana of any one color. Mirage Mesa, another gray one, and as it enters the battlefield, you choose a color and you tap to add one mana of the chosen color. Wreck and rebuild is a sorcery cost three. With gruel in the cost and choose one destroy target artifact or enchantment or mill five cards and you may put a land card from graveyard onto battlefield tap and you can flash back it again very good but where are my landfall effects that's the thing there are not that many um so far we have one two three that's it oh four yeah with this one but this one is quite expensive so yeah we have four landfall effects out of a deck of a hundred that plays so much in putting back land cards um from you know the graveyard and in general just playing so many land cards it's gonna be more important i would believe than they actually put it here angel of the ruins is a five seven angel it costs seven has flying and whenever it enters the battlefield exile up to two target uh, artifacts and enchantments and it's plain cycling i know why you're doing this for the cycle yeah okay i don't know if you have nothing better i don't think this is really synergistic and despite the cycling you know there are better cards that you can cycle then we have bristling backwards so now we're starting to see the deserts of double lands that are coming from this expansion so those are really really nice so you're gonna have all three of them here and uh, then uh, i'm gonna put these here those have the scare tiller the scarecrow one four that costs four whenever you can stop you choose one you pull a land card from your hand on the battlefield tap and then return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap very good usually this is a mech card but in this kind of deck is very very good um yeah from hand or from graveyard i guess um graveyard here then we have the nantuko cultivators a two two insect druid that costs four and when it enters the battlefield you you may discard any number of land cards and put that many plus one plus one counters on the cultivator and draw that many cards so this is more of a um a way to discard more so that's one thing and um, more lands in one go so if you have five or six this allows you to just discard as many as you want and then you grow it and then you draw that many cards so this is quite good in this deck next up we have a grand total of six planes four mountains and seven forests so that's it for this overview now let's talk about the deck it is a very very original and very very fun deck i will give it that i really like the idea of this deck i think the execution of it just wasn't up to par you have a lot of ways to put cards from either the top of your library or from the hand into your graveyard you can discard lands you can stack lands that part is an engine that's going and ongoing because of that i would remove those cards that allow you to exile because let's be honest you want them in your graveyard more and your hand more so than, than in exile themselves unless you have a lot of ways to play more than one land per turn and that's one thing that it's not having but we'll get to the not having you have ways to landfall very little so it's four cards not that great um you have ways of creating tokens as well but again not a lot of them you have very little of that so uh it's kind of like the jack of all trades part kind of useless here and uh yeah you have the ways of putting extra lands into play but there's only two and there's so many more ways uh to do <laughs> more with your lands and to play extra lands per turn that i don't understand why they didn't choose to to put them in and um yeah you have a bit more of, of creating some tokens here um and, or powering up stuff but realistically i think the punch of the deck is lacking right you you're doing so much with your with your deck that it's it's so frustratingly lost because again remember first off you want spell you know spells um to cost less for each land card in your graveyard so that's great um sorry this spell to cost because you know you, you can do your commander really cheaply easily with how many times you can discard and put into your graveyard and then you know you can sack lands and draw cards so that's great and then it keep keep him into the graveyard if necessary or replay them and then when a desert card enters the battlefield and this is the important part you get to do four two green 
plan warrior creatures. Now, the 4-2 part is how you actually kill your opponents because otherwise you don't have a lot of other things and you don't alpha strike the tokens. And I think this should have gone more either on the token generation part and or the landfall part. And because of the commander in of itself, I think you could definitely do both. You could definitely lose a couple of uses card, have a couple more of those ones that, for example, allow you to play more than one land or do more things with lands, more landfall stuff. And then, um, yeah, then maybe lose a couple of the return any card from graveyard um, and just play some crucible of, of, of worlds. And with a little bit of adjustment, there is method to the madness in this deck and i can say that so because of that i think this deck falls short and i will have to give it a 6.5 out of uh 10. i'm tempted to give it a 6 but i don't want to be too harsh i think it's still good i think it's still got value i think it's still is a really unique idea it's just the execution is so meddled and because you know this is the kind of idea that a brewer would have oh i i'll make a, a commander like this and i'll try to build it around it but because they can't put all the strong cards that will make this deck amazing they've kind of made a mildew of everything and it tends to be so when they create the first idea kind of of something new so this one for example um and i might be wrong it might be a commander that does exactly the same thing or close to it but it tends to be that when they create the first time something like this then they tend to try and do too much and not figure it out just well enough so i'll stick with a 6.5 for this let me know in the comments down below if you agree or you don't agree or if you would make any other changes we read and reply to every one of them if you like this video, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe as it does help small channels like ours a lot. And until the next one, we hope to see you soon. And we wish you a lovely day, a blessed day. We thank you, Scotty and I, and we'll see you in the next one. Be good, be kind, and have a good day. Bye!